So we may have just explored some of the reasons we send humans to space. Let's look at the current status of human spaceflight. Where are we at? Okay, so right now the humans in space are in low Earth orbit. Yes. Um, most of them are in the International Space Station, which is a joint venture between the Americans, Russians, Europeans, and numerous other partners. Yep. Um, the Russians were involved because there's a way to keep all the Russian um, rocket scientists from going off and selling their services to you know, terrorist country, states. Yes. The idea was we'll throw lots of money their way so they can build something like this and, in the 1990s. You know, the, there is a Russian side, there's an American side. It kind of, I, I explained it, it kind of operates almost like a timeshare, right? You know, that you have your own amount of seats and your own amount of time you can use. Yes, so this is the biggest um, space station. It's in a low Earth orbit um, and is permanently inhabited. Uh, the Chinese also have their Tiangong uh, space probe, which is basically very similar, only a bit smaller. A bit smaller, bit, but a bit bigger than actually the, the first US and Russian ones oh, yeah. in Skylab. Oh, yeah, it's, it's part of a series of these things that the yep. Chinese have launched. And so between the two, there is a permanent human presence in, space, in low Earth orbit. Yep. And What's the point of this? Well, mostly it's learning how to keep humans alive in space. Yeah, most of it is actually for the purpose of can they survive? What do we need to do with the somewhat bigger goal of eventually we would go further else? But that is not quite where we're at right now. However, the going somewhere else is now hopefully about to start with yep. NASA's Artemis program. So here's the launch of Artemis 1. This is the SLS, yep. a very big rocket system here, and you'll see it light up. Um, this is the flares to burn off any leaking hydrogen. Then they dump huge amounts of water. That's most partially to stop the pad being destroyed, yep. but also to mop up some of the sound waves. Oh, this okay. is a very noisy, vibrating rocket, so much so that actually they can't launch some things on it. They have to use the Falcons. Yes. Because they don't vibrate it to pieces as much as this does. And, you know, and, and at the time of filling, they've, they've announced Artemis 2, which is going to take actual humans around the moon, including yep. um, the first non-American, finally, and the first woman and person of color. So yes. it's changing. So that will launch the Orion space capsule. Yep. And this uh, will, I mean, the Orion 1 was unmanned. Yep. It flew around the moon just to check that it could all work and re-enter successfully. Um, Orion 2 will carry people. They won't land on the moon. They'll go around it. Yep. And the plan may be in two or three years' time, but I'll yep. believe it when I see it, is that Artemis 3 mission actually goes and lands. And lands. Yes. And the idea is you start off actually by, they've contracted us out to SpaceX, who hopefully will have their Starship flying by then. Yep. It might promise it might be the next month at the time of filming. That's right. So hopefully that has already happened. And the idea is you'd launch this uh, Starship HLS. Yep. Um, which by the time you launch it will be empty of fuel, but then you launch a number of other Starships to fill it up with fuel. Yep. Uh, and then once it's full of fuel, it'll fly and loiter near the moon in some conspicuous orbit. <laughs> And then you put your astronauts on the uh, SLS or, and you fire them up, they rendezvous. Then this SpaceX Starship lands on the moon and takes off again after they've spent a week exploring somewhere on the yep. south pole of the moon, um, transfers them back to the Orion rocket, which then brings them back to the Earth. That's right. So I think this will be very exciting when it happens. And hopefully five years from now, we'll be able to look back and refilm this video with sort of talking about how it actually happened. Exactly. And so the idea is to go to the South Pole craters, which is where there's potentially water ice, a very interesting place to land. Um, and that is not just to do it once. That's the original right. one is to go there for about a week. Uh, but though my plan is to launch one of these things every year or two. That's right. And, and also staying there longer, right? Yeah, and the plan is actually to build what's called the Gateway, yes. and it's a, a space station, like a smaller version of the International Space Station, but in orbit around the moon. So that's rather a strange orbit. <laughs> And it's in a strange orbit to actually avoid a very critical problem, and that is going around the far side of the moon. You want it to be in communication with the Earth most of the time, and also you want something to go over the poles. Yes. And in particular, this orbit has a low delta V to reach mm. it from the Earth mm. and on the way back and to get into the moon. Yes. So this is something they had to work long and hard to find suitable orbits for all that. That's right. It was actually, in fact, they built a little probe just to test the orbit of this to make sure it all works. That's right. So that's where human spaceflight is now in the future. Going to Mars is in everyone's dream list, but no one's opened the checkbook yet, of course. And it's I'm gonna... sure there's some uh, someone in the SpaceX has done some detailed planning. I'm sure there is, and we're going to talk a little bit about how, why it's going to be complicated soon.